just a few minutes. Uh, Colossians chapter 2. Uh, with so many things going on, uh, living and around us uh, in our own lives as well as the lives of those that we are uh, emotionally uh, attached to, uh, we need some comfort. Amen? Amen. And I'm afraid that sometimes we, we miss out and forget where comfort truly lies and where comfort truly comes from. So just as a uh, brief reminder this morning, uh, we talk from the subject that your hearts might be comforted. That your hearts might be comforted. Uh, we have, uh, have many loved ones amongst us from this number here who uh, dealt with the COVID recently and some will still uh, deal with it. We'll continue to lift them up in our prayers and they got high prices and you got turmoil here and turmoil there and you don't know whether you're going to come in sometimes. And, but as a child of God, we ought to have a different mindset and see things differently. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just not here to just drop off and, you know, come back in at a million time or something like that. But God has us here for a reason. Amen. Uh, but this is just a temporary uh, place. Uh, we're just a journalist. We're pivotal. We're just traveling along. And while we're here, uh, we want to deal with things. Amen. But like Psalm would say, you want to deal with them, or are you going to make up your mind to deal with them with God or without God? I, I don't claim to be a genius. I don't play one on TV. But I believe, amen, wholeheartedly, it's a lot easier and better to deal with the things of life with God. Amen. I've seen it in my life. I've seen it in the last world. So we're over. Things that will be uh, uh, potentially life crushing. Events happened in their lives, but because they had God and a relationship with Him, it made all the difference in the world. Because at the end of the day, weeping, amen, somebody said, may endure for the night. But if you keep your hearts and minds in an intimate relationship with God, joy will come mm -hmm. in the morning. You want to deal with some things, amen. But amen. I said, joy will come. In the morning, so just for a few minutes this morning, uh, from the subject that your hearts might be comforted. In Colossians chapter 2, Colossians chapter 2, within that verse number 1, uh, Paul says, For I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them that have ever seen, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. He says that their hearts might be comforted. Paul says, I, I'm struggling, but I, I want their minds to be comforted. He said, I, I feel, amen. He said, I, I, I'm sympathetic and empathetic towards them and things they're going through, but this is my desire. This is my prayer for you. This is my request on your behalf that your hearts might be comforted. He says, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and the Father and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Paul says, For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joining and beholding your order and steadfastness of your faith in Christ. And that's going to be the key. He says, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Paul encourages them to remember who they are and from whom someone would say all blessings flow. I remember singing a song back when I was young saying, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Paul said, you got to remember this. Sometimes we allow external situations and forces and circumstances to dictate who we are. They become internal and now they're starting to act out in us. Not so as a Christian. We are bigger than that. 
You don't have to just give in and just become part of what's, what's, what's going on now. Amen. As a child of God, you have resources. We spoke about that this morning in Bible study. We talked about prayer. You have prayer power. You have to learn to use it. When your heart is, is, is not confident, when the things are going on in your life seems to be turned upside down and here and there and to and fro, you got God. Let these words comfort you. Paul says, he says, I'm praying that your hearts might be comforted. If you look at Psalm uh, 30, Psalm 30, verse number 1, the psalmist says it this way. In Psalm 30, verse number 1, the psalmist says, in Psalm 30, verse number 1, the psalmist says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. The son says, I got the last laugh. He recognized who God is and where he stands in his relationship with God. He goes on to say, O oh Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. So uh, Dixon used to be fond of saying that a fool's mouth don't get fed. I would say the same about a Paul's voice of prayer. If you don't pray, amen. If you don't pray to God, you think the thing that just won't happen? Mm -mm. That's not how they happen. Mm -mm. You have to open your mouth and make your request and be willing to cry out. Be willing to cry out. Sometimes we can get loud for the, the wrongest reasons. Amen. <laughs> we can get loud and boisterous sometimes for the wrongest reasons. But man, when something's going on in your life, you're a child of God, you need to speak up. Amen. You need to speak up. It could be somebody picking up the phone and calling somebody and say, hey, can you pray with me? It could be somebody just getting out on your knees and praying to God. Amen. It could be somebody just finding something to occupy your time from a, from a positive standpoint. There are things to keep your mind from wandering and drifting. But if people don't know what you need, I've heard some skill of self spider. Well, you know what I need. You know, you know what I need. Uh, no. How about sharing with me? Because what I may think you need may not be what you need. Amen. So when you need, and you need of God, <clears throat> open up. Open up. God loves to hear from us. That's right. He loves to hear from us. Take the time to open up to Him. So the summer says, O oh Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave, thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. This talks about somebody who was in dire straits, amen? They were not in a good place, in a good way. But they recognized, I will look unto the hills on which come of my help. Do you know where to look? Do you know where your help comes from? Your help comes from above. He says, sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. Watch this. Psalm 30, verse 5. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy, come in the morning. Mm -hmm. Man, those words are so comforting to me. Because myself, like you, I've been through some things in my life. I mean, I've been through uh, things as, as dramatic and traumatic as you've gone through in your life. And on the other hand, you may not have been through some things I've been through in my life, but I know we've all been through some things. And man, it's tough when you're suffering. Because that's, that's not what we want to be, amen? Amen. Nobody just chooses you know, I'll say the right use of the mind, just choose the suffering over peace and comfort. But when those times do come, recognize that they are just for a moment. When you have the right relationship with God, you recognize that they are just for a moment. And that's how the psalmist was able to say, uh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy come in the morning. Keep that thought with you. Joy coming in the morning. No matter what situation you find yourself in, no matter what conflict 
you find yourself in, no matter which way persecution may be coming to you, keep in mind that joy cometh in the morning, but it only comes from the Father of all comfort. It comes from the Father of all comfort. Can't nobody do me if somebody to say it like Jesus. Ain't nobody doing it like the Lord. So when it comes to the, the subject of comfort, nobody can come equal or close to what the Lord has to offer. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 8, back to Paul. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 8, he says, but let us who are of the day, be sore, put it on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an heaven, the hope of salvation. Paul talks about those of us who are of the day. He talks about those who walk in the light. Amen? Mm -hmm. oh, uh, Jesus speaks about evil men loving darkness. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because they can do their dirt. Amen? In the darkness. But the children of God, we favor light. So Paul says, let us, uh, who are of the day, be sober, have, have the right way of thinking, have a clear mind. Put it on the breastplate of faith. We spoke about that in Bible study this morning. Yep. The importance of our faith in God. Not allow our faith to be shaken, to be uh, moved by every wind and doctrine that comes forth a man, a sleight of hand, and all those things that man will put up before you that does not come forth from God's word. He said, don't let your faith be shaken. Put on the breastplate of faith and love. And for in him the hope of salvation. He says, for God has not appointed us to wrap. It kills me when I see people acting out. Say, well, God had me to do this. Really? I need to go read that. <laughs> but God had not appointed us to, he found his children, amen, to rap. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who what? Died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. He says, wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. Paul says, I've seen you in action. I've seen how you've come to the aid of one another. And that's one thing I've always admired about the Nation Street Church of Christ since 1984, being baptized into the body of Christ. I've always admired how the church comes together to comfort one another. And we've seen each other some tough times, amen? Yeah. In the last 20 years that I've been here, yeah. we've seen each other through some tough times, mm -hmm. through some rough times. And I've even been the recipient of that comfort. I lost loved ones and different things that happened in my life. So I've been on the receiving end of that as well. <clears throat> and many of you have been on the receiving end of being comforted when, when things were, well, it looked like they were at their worst. We, we, we feel like they know which way to turn. But behold, for it comes to love. Mm -hmm. The love of the saints. The comfort that God comforted us with. We, in turn, we turn around and hand it right back out. Amen? Amen. To someone else who's struggling with an issue. Someone who's dealing with uh, a bad health. Or ill health, someone who's lost a loved one, or has a loved one that's in a bad way, someone who may be, may be down financially, someone whose spirit may have been broken because of a relationship issue, or well, whatever the case may be. Paul says, I've seen you in action. And, 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 and though we don't like to see the situation as it unfolds, that causes us to be in that way. We love seeing the response when someone is hurting. We don't like to see the situation because those are hurtful, they're painful. But the response put forth, the comforting that comes from the brothers and sisters, those who are like-minded, those who have a mind to say, but by God's grace, this could be me. 
Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that I clean it up. Mm -hmm. I think it's a bad testimony on us when we're never there to comfort someone else. But in time of comfort, pure is everybody come to our aid. But at the same time, we're never there to offer that to anybody else. Well, hmm. You don't know what you mean. It's an hour. God is a giver. Mm -hmm. Jesus says it's more cheerful to give than to receive. Amen. You don't know what you're missing out on when you're not there to offer or give comfort to others. And in many cases, it just helps me choose not to be sad. It may have been yesterday. That may be today, but it does not have to be tomorrow. Yeah. The change that you need to make now need to be made now. Amen. No matter what you've done in the past, the change that you need to make now needs to be made now. But be a part of the body of Christ. Be a part of the family and be there to help comfort one another. Paul says, I've seen you in action. And I can imagine putting a smile on Paul's face. As it does me when I see us stepping up and stepping out to be there for one another in whatever way we can. Sometimes it may be an inconvenience. But hey, none of us are sacrificing anything greater than Jesus, right? Amen. None of us have to be that sacrifice. What we call the ultimate sacrifice. So I still say we're in a good way, amen. So Paul says, wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify, build up one another, even as you also do. So Paul said, keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on doing what you're doing. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. It's our first closer. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16. Now you simply want us to know and remember the importance of our hearts being comforted. Because when your heart is comforted, man, you're going to comfort so much. When you come out and you comfort all those things that you're dealing with and recognize that God is in control. Yep. And though you may be going through something, we can be in a different day, but joy comes in the morning. Man, you can get your mind to that place. You talk about being somewhere that's worthwhile. Talk about comforting your heart. The second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16, it says, Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which have loved us, has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Nobody does like him. He says, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Mm -hmm. We talk about the one who avoids us comfort, who has given us the example after example to look at and to read and to witness in the lives of one another. God stepping forth to comfort us. Second Peter chapter one. It's our closer. Second Peter chapter one. You've heard me many times use this text uh, in lessons. A lot of times in the settings of funerals, when we say uh, goodbye to family members, uh, loved ones who lost family members, we're saying goodbye, and having a memorial service. You've heard me use this text. But in Second Peter chapter one, verse number one. Paul writing to the church at Corinth, who had been through a whole laundry list of problems and issues. Some similar to and like things that we've dealt with in the family here. But nevertheless, Paul wanted to remind them in this second letter how they were able to get past and overcome those things that had caused turmoil and trouble and uh, divisions and other things, other issues in the church. Paul said in all the other sides that I wrote about in the first letter, let me open this second means of communication with you. 
And 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse number 1, says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, and with all the saints which are in all the kingdom. He says, Grace be to you and peace from God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only is he the Father of mercies, recognizing that mercy, that word mercy, uh, means that one does not get what they deserve. And what we truly deserve, based upon what was done to the Son of God, Jesus Christ, we deserve that. For what our sin did to the Son of God, you and I, we're going to be honest, truly deserve that. Amen. But mercy. Stepped up by the way of Jesus Christ. You see, he is the propitiation for our sins. He is the one through whom God channels that mercy. Only through him. No one ever else ever referred to as the propitiation for my sins and yours. Only Jesus Christ, the one through whom God shows mercy, which means that we didn't get what we deserve because of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. His love for his son allows him to channel that mercy to us. So Paul says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. What we need? Comfort. Comfort. What's missing sometimes in our lives? Comfort. Sometimes we've been in pain so long that we don't even recognize comfort when it comes. We don't even recognize comfort when it comes. Going up with some children, uh, they were falling put their shoes on their own feet. And then we pointed out I've been working on the wrong feet for so long, they put them on the right feet, Jamie. Mm -hmm. They say they don't feel right. <laughs> they don't even recognize comfort. Because mm -hmm. they have been in a situation for so long. That's how we are sometimes in our lives, you and I. Mm -hmm. And we don't even recognize what comfort feels like, looks like. But let me say this as I close. The God of all comfort. It says in verse 4, 2 chapter 1, verse 4, who comfort us in all our tribulation. And all of those things that have gone in your life, going on in your life, and you seem like you're just, it seems like you was in a car going down the hill, heading for a cliff, with no brakes and no steering wheel. <laughs> it was just a matter of how quick will it be over with. Because you felt as if there was nothing that you could do. You couldn't stop it. You couldn't stir it. You couldn't turn it off. There was nothing you could do. And we have found ourselves, well, maybe I'm to make it, but we should have. And situations in life like that, that you didn't know what to do. But Paul says, there is one, no matter if you're in that car, going down that hill with no brakes, coming to the edge of a cliff, with no steering wheel. You can't turn it if you couldn't turn it if you wanted to. You can't stop it if you wanted to. But there is God who covered us in all our tribulation. And he does not just do this for us. Mm -hmm. Don't think that God comforts you just for the sake of comforting you, amen? Mm -hmm. He offers us comfort because he loves us, but he plans on you mm -hmm. and me. There's going to be somebody else right. in that car going down the hill, right. coming up on the cliff, uh -huh. with no 
with no steering wheel and no brakes. So he doesn't, he's not just doing this for you. But it says, who comfort us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them in trouble. who are in what kind of trouble? Any trouble. Any trouble. Mm -hmm. Someone asked you questions, is there anything too hard for a tie? Is there anything too hard for God? No. Nope. 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 Have you ran across anything that's too hard for God? And if you say, yes, I ran across something too hard for God, I think you say, it wasn't too hard for God. Yeah, like you with your faith. Thank God. Yeah, like you with your faith. Thank God. But there's nothing that's too hard for God. So he comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to what? Comfort those who are in any kind of trouble. There's nothing that we can encounter. That God and not see us good. It comes down to where is your faith? Mm -hmm. And it says this comfort that he uses it and brings us, delivers us in our tribulation, he affords that to us as you may call it life experiences. Mm -hmm. So I tend to think of problems and things of that kind of life. I tend to think about them not just as problems, but also as experiences. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if I'm going through this, mm -hmm. there may be somebody else. Yeah. It was just hanging around the corner waiting for them to show up. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just a problem by like a trial or tribulation, but it was an experience. Mm -hmm. And what's that have to do with me? Mm -hmm. That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. How? By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are confident of God. Just like God got me through, I can put them on the right path. Hey man, I know it's, it's, it seems bleak right now. It seems bad. And it is. Sometimes we have to just be honest with you. Amen. It is bad. It's a bad situation, brother sister. But God can get you through it. Amen. But what what I have to so confident? It is no secret, the song says, what God can do. What he's done for others. The song says he will do for you. With arms wide open, he will comfort you. Let me tell you all, it is no secret what my God Amen. The reason why I know what God can do because I've seen him in my life. I've seen him work in my trials and tribulations. Somebody said, Brother Bishop, you ain't got no trials and tribulations. You don't know about my Brother Bishop. Brother Bishop has had trials and tribulations in his life. Now I expect there's going to be more coming. But I also know I'm assured that God can handle anything that comes my way. Do I trust him to or not? There's another question. I choose, amen, put my faith in him. So he says, as I close here, by the comfort, but well, when we comfort ourselves, are our comfort of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation is also abound by Christ. Paul goes on to say, but we be afflicted, either for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be confident, it is for your consolation and salvation. Paul said, everything that I go through, now I understand. It's not just about me. But it's about somebody else. And he says, and I hope of you to steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so should it be also of the consolation. Verse 8. Subject chapter 1, verse 8. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, 
Sometimes people try to put forth that, I call it that Facebook life. Y'all y'all folks y'all Facebook folks know what that life feels like. Right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Everything's great. On vacation here, I just won the lottery. I just won the beauty contest. The kids got all straight A's. This one lays the football team. That one. Facebook life. That's not life. Oh, that person don't show you everything. Now, some of them show you too much. Amen. That's not life. Because Paul helped us understand. And he's an apostle. Paul said he had troubles. Paul says in verse 8, something chapter 1, verse 8. But we would not, brethren, have you ignorant about trouble. Paul said, I ain't got no Facebook life. Paul said, I ain't going to try to sugarcoat it. We would not have you ignorant about trouble that came to us in Asia. That we were pressed, Paul says. I ain't got people on Facebook, oh, my life is pressed. This is bad, that's bad. You see that Facebook life, and they're like, boy, if I class makes that going on. Oh. So you think. And then the people that you know what's going on in their life, when they put that Facebook life out there, it's really sad. And you're like, I know this ain't true. All of a sudden, I'm on Facebook life. All of a sudden, I'm going to do some things. And brothers and sisters, we go through some things, and that's okay. That's okay. Because we're the children of God. And when we go through something, let us glorify God by how we handle what we're going through. Mm -hmm. In quicksand. Hmm. And then stick up a one tip of your finger. Mm -hmm. I'm still believing God got me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those kids up with the tip of your finger, God got me. That's the kind of comfort I have in God. The kind of faith I'm talking about having in God. But Paul said, yeah, I'm going to do some things. Press God to make a bus strength. There's so much that we despair even of life. And I'm sorry it's not happening at the time. Hmm. We, had, we had sinners of death in ourselves, and we should not trust in ourselves, but in God. Who should we trust in? God. Our Facebook. But in God, which raised the dead. Now watch this, verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death and death who delivered and whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Paul says he's done it, he's doing it, and he will do it again. Paul said he's done it, he's doing it, and he will do it again. Mm -hmm. That's the comfort that we have in being a child of God, knowing what these brothers do, what he's working on now with us, and whatever is up there around the corner, on the other side of the wall, on the other side of the fence, I don't even know what it is. I don't know what it looks like. Mm -hmm. I don't even know the name of it. I don't know its origins. But whatever it is, God got it. And that's the comfort that I'm going to carry in my heart. That's the comfort I'm going to carry in my heart. And I pray that you may have that comfort in your heart. That no matter what you have been through, what's going on in your life, and what's out there on the horizon, God got it. Paul says that their hearts might be comforted. What's Brother Bishop trying to do? I'm trying to comfort your heart this morning. Because I know there's a lot of stuff going on. I know because I talk to you, I hear it. I'm praying with you and for you. Mm -hmm. I know what's going on. But God has got it. God has got it. What is it? Don't matter. Don't matter. Doesn't matter who or what. If God be for us, who? The business. Mm -hmm. Keep that thought in mind. Comfort your heart with these words. He is the God of all comfort. And he has surrounded you. Amen. Mm -hmm. He has surrounded you with others of like mind. 
Mm -hmm. Who wants to see nothing but what's best for you? Just like God wants to see nothing but what's best for you. That's how I feel about all of you. And I believe you feel that way about me. No, I'm not just saying to be said. That's why I truly believe you. I'm showing sure otherwise. I want what's best for you, and I believe that you want what's best for me. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we are children of God. Amen. We are children of God. And we are all trying to get to heaven. All trying to get to heaven. And when such time comes, unless Jesus comes back first, we face death. We want to make sure that we have died in such a way that we will hear him say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. Comfort your hearts. Comfort your hearts. Man, it's so much stuff you can let this stuff get to you and control your life and run your life and be miserable. For what? Weeping? They endure for the night with joy. Mm -hmm. Joy comfort in the morning. Mm -hmm. May God comfort and keep you. This is my prayer. That your hearts may be comfortable. If you're not a child of God, become a child of God and, be, and become a recipient all that I've spoken about, you become a recipient of that by being obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Paul once again lays out the facts of the gospel, three facts of death and burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. He was buried and Adam on the third day. Matthew 28, 18 to 20, he says, Go and teach all nations, baptize, teach. He says, In Acts 2 30, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be he says, and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. If you're not a child of God, become a child of God. Don't put it off. Tomorrow is not promised. All we have is not two seconds ago, not five seconds ago. We don't have six seconds from now. We have now. That's all we have. That's the, that's the tiny window that we work in. Now. And the truth says, now is acceptable time. Today is their salvation. Mm. If you're not a child of God, I'm for you. Obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross of the earth, rose again. There is a one who says, Go there and be willing to believe it. Have a change of mind or repent and be willing to confess with their mouth that they believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They have all the sins washed away in water, away baptism. And in that baptism, the answer of a good conscience towards God, the contact the blood of Christ. You don't know a certain a sin, but you come. Obedient unto righteousness. And operation takes place that all we do is bury. Mm -hmm. You see the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you come up and you add it to the body of Christ, the church of Christ. It's his body, it's his wife. He died for her. He's coming back for her. And if you're a child of God, you fall by the wayside for whatever reason. Or you simply need prayer for yourself or someone else. Or you just want to take this opportunity to thank you, to thank God. I'm going to do all those things right now, but just as we stand and sing something, you're going to